Hi everybody, my name is Justin Stoney and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 69 of Voice Lessons to the World, the show where we want to help you guys as singers by answering your questions from all over and I'll give you a chance to ask questions later. But our question for this week comes from Katerina K in Patras, Greece. And Katerina writes, Dear Justin, at the end of every episode you always say, find a great voice teacher in your area. How can I find a great voice teacher? Now, Katerina, that's just a spectacular question and actually a thing, if I can speak humbly, that I feel I know a thing or two about. First of all, I feel just blessed uh, to have found my calling in life to be a voice teacher. To me, giving you guys vocal information is just the coolest thing. Not only that, but along the way as a singer and as a voice teacher, I got to study with some of the greatest voice teachers that I've ever known. I've also trained voice teachers with our New York Vocal Coaching teacher training and certification, and then I've employed some of the fiercest, finest, most ferocious voice teachers to our staff at New York Vocal Coaching. So at this point, I feel fortunate to be able to say I know a thing or two, I think, about finding a great voice teacher. And so today, I'm gonna share with you guys some tips for what to look for in a great voice teacher. And our very first tip is that teaching is their passion. In nature, we have hunters and gatherers. Hunters would be something like a lion or a shark or a wolf. Gatherers would be something like a squirrel or an ant or a bee. At New York Vocal Coaching, the voice teachers I look to hire are hunters and gatherers, hunting constantly for more vocal information and gathering it up in their vocal vault. In other words, lifelong students of the voice who can never get enough vocal information to help their students. Katerina, you want a voice teacher who can discuss the muscular antagonism between the cricothyroid and the thyroarytenoid muscle. You want your voice teacher to be able to discuss the role the palatoglossus muscle plays in laryngeal stability. You want your voice teacher to wax rhapsodic at the dysphonia and its source of vocal fry, false vocal cords, or areopiglottic folds. In other words, Katerina, you want a voice teacher who's hungry for vocal knowledge and who can answer your question. And if they can't answer your question, who's going to go out and get that information to help you. The next thing is voice teachers and their ears. Voice teachers need to have superhero kind of hearing. You want your voice teacher to pick up on vocal habits right away. You want them to hear cricothyroid, bam, digastric, pow, sternocleidomastoid, zap, and get it right away. And this is another reason why you want to find a voice teacher that's passionate about voice teaching first and foremost. The only way to get your voice teaching ears to that level is to be devoted to this job. To teach, 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 teach. If I can share personally, back in the day when I was cutting my chops as a voice teacher, I used to teach 12 hour days. This was insane. I used to teach 12 hours without a break from 10 to 10 the entire day, every day. That was my teaching day. I used to go out after that and every little car horn, every little tree leaf, my ears were just buzzing. But it was all worth it because now uh, there's nothing that gets by the goalie. And the only way that you can get your ears to that level is to be totally devoted to teaching. So find a voice teacher who really knows what they're hearing. The next thing is a voice teacher that gets the results. Now, Katerina, it should come as no surprise that singing is very difficult to master. It takes years of study, practice, and devotion. This being said, you don't want to be sitting in your voice lessons constantly thinking, hmm, I'm not really sure if I'm getting any better. No, you want a voice teacher that gets you those tangible results. I know our staff prides themselves on getting that result every single lesson. Now, it's okay to take two steps forward sometimes and then one step back, two steps forward, but you really want to know what progress that you're making and know that your voice teacher is communicating that. So a teacher that gets results. Next, the voice teacher and their singing. Now, it seems like common sense, but I think it's worth saying. You should like the sound of your voice teacher's voice. You should say, that voice is pleasing to me. I think they have very good vocal technique. I admire what they can do with their voice. If your voice teacher is going to ask you to do it, they ought to be able to do it themselves. Your voice teacher should be able to demonstrate various vocal coordinations for you in the exercises and in songs. You should say, 
this voice teacher has a voice that I think is healthy and demonstrates good vocal technique. Next is instrument and musical prowess. Voice teachers are not just teachers of voice, but also teachers of music. So you need to find a voice teacher who's also a great musician, somebody that can explain musical concepts to you, and also who knows and understands your style. Now, not every voice teacher is going to be an amazing accompanist. If you find a great pianist as a voice teacher, that's a very, very cool thing. But most voice teachers are going to be competent on the piano enough to give you great vocal exercises to work on and ideally to accompany you a little bit. But in any case, you want to have a voice teacher who you admire as a musician, not just as a singer. Next is adaptability. Now, Katerina, no two singers are the same. No two voices are the same, and no two people are the same. So while vocal methods can be helpful, we don't want to get lost in them. You want to find a voice teacher who's able to adapt to you and your needs. I know that when I train voice teachers, I try to train them and mentor them to be able to change their ways, change their methods, to be able to best help the person standing in front of them find creative strategies to help them get to their goals. So you want to find a voice teacher who can adapt to you. Next, we're going to need a positive environment. When we study singing, we're not just studying how to make the muscles do what we want them to do, but we're also bearing our souls. And so you want to feel really good around your voice teacher. You want to trust them and you want them to create a positive and safe space for you. You may notice your voice teacher becoming something of a mentor or a friend or a therapist a confidant, or a professional guide, or many of these things. That's why it's so important that the voice teacher creates a very positive space for you to explore those places in your soul and those places in your physical technique. Now the next thing is generosity. Now it's no secret that voice lessons can cost quite a bit of money. It's hard to find a very qualified voice teacher. So if you find one and they charge a significant amount, that's different than being in it for the money. What you're going to notice, Katerina, is a generosity of spirit with a truly great voice teacher. Generous with their time, generous with their ideas, generous with their resources. People are always asking me, Justin, aren't you worried about giving away so much free vocal information? And the answer is no. Because, for example, if a top surgeon gives away his surgical techniques, that doesn't mean that another doctor is going to be able to do surgery. Great voice teachers are not copycats. And great voice teachers are not in it for the money. They're in it to help you. Last but not least, we have leaving the ego at the door. Now, the arts and singing and music do tend to attract some big egos, and this is really not the best quality for a voice teacher to have. You don't want a voice teacher that's showing off their voice or showing off their knowledge or teaching at you when they're supposed to be working with you. No, you want a voice teacher that'll leave their ego at the door. A voice teacher who wants to learn from you as much as they want to teach you. A voice teacher who would be thrilled if one day they found you singing better than they've ever sung in their life. A voice teacher who, when they're in the audience, doesn't secretly wish that they were up there, but instead is the one with a tear rolling down their cheek because they're so, so proud of you and all that you've accomplished. That's the voice teacher that you want. So, Katerina and all, I hope that that's been helpful for you guys, and I hope that it leads you to the voice teacher that you were meant to be with. If you guys have got questions that you'd like to see us answer on the show, you can send an email to questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com. So we just encourage you, don't lose that joy. Don't lose that passion. Don't let people tell you you can't sing. You and I know it's not true. As we've been talking, find a great voice teacher in your area. Or if you guys are in the New York City area or you'd like to Skype with one of us, you can visit us at www.newyorkvocalcoaching.com. And if you are a voice teacher or an aspiring voice teacher, I encourage you to check out voiceteachertraining.com. It's the New York Vocal Coaching Voice Teacher Training and Certification, a great uh, chance for you guys to have the training in vocal pedagogy and in voice teaching that you want to start a very successful vocal studio, hopefully all around the world. 
Also, uh, we have our free app for iPad and iPhone that I encourage you guys to download. It's uh, www.voicelessonstotheworld.com. I'm Justin Stoney. We'll see you next time.